Welcome to the Late Break Show, Car Caves. In the previous video, I went around a chap called Richard Gill's own little collection, den if you like, of vehicles and asked him why he owns what he owns and had a good natter. This video then is the follow on where I drive one of his cars and it had to be the Spiker because let's face it, when was the last time you ever saw a Spiker, heard a Spiker, especially a right hand drive one? And I have to say a big thank you to Adrian Flux Insurance, who I insure my cars with, because I managed to get uh, cover to drive this car today. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you and say that I was never intending to drive one of these cars. We were. I just wasn't sure whether I could get cover on a Spiker for a couple of hours of filming. Bearing in mind this is a quarter of a million quid's worth of car nowadays, and not just that, extremely rare car. I mean, when was the last time you saw a Spiker on the road, A, and B, when was the last time you saw a right-hand drive Spiker? It's a proper rare bird. And as Richard said, it predates Pagani, it predates the Veyron, it predates all of that stuff, it predates the Audi R8. So it was the Audi engine supercar before Audi did it. Now this one has, it's got rose jointed suspension. It's, it's quite a hard ride actually, but we are on the streets with potholes and things. Honestly, the gear shifter is so nice, that exposed skeletal arm. It's like you're changing gear with uh, Terminator 2's arm or the Terminator, because Terminator 2 was made of molten metal. Whatever, you know what I mean. You've got the window inside the window. Everything is polished or machine turned alley. I've got the seat as far back as it'll go and it's, um, it's quite tight, which is unusual given that it's a, uh, it's a Dutch supercar and Dutch people tend to be tall from memory. And as I said before, in here is the ignition key. So you've got to open the glove box to put the key in, which is an Audi key, turn it. Then the car doesn't fire because you have to put that switch on and then press the engine start. It's just like a three stage deal. This is what I hope that you'll appreciate about car caves. It's not just about expensive cars. I know this is expensive and, uh, and rare, but it's that eclectic mix. The same guy that owns this has a, a Land Rover Defender ambulance and an electric moped and the last of the minis and a high mileage left-hand drive 90s Ferrari. That throttle response is so crisp. It's really, really good. I mean, it, all, it kind of feels like it's on carbs. With this twin roof above me, it's just brilliant. Isn't it great? I mean, the thing is, is even when they came out, Richard said Ferraris were quicker of the same era. Lamborghinis were probably more Larry, but it depends what you want out of a car. If you want just sheer quirkiness and exclusivity, let's face it, nothing says quirky more than a spiker. I mean, this dashboard is just amazing. Wow. Just sounds brilliant. Just sounds excellent. You can really hear it whistle. I've left this, this micro window down because I wanted to hear it. Just hear that Audi V8. It's not, it's not trying that hard because 
spikers were all aluminium, so it's not a very heavy car, it's not a very big car. We're going down some quite narrow lanes and actually you can thread it through quite well because it hasn't got enormous haunches. It's quite a short wheelbase, shorter than I was expecting. I mean, it sounds American, doesn't it? Yeah, that could be a that could be a Dodge Challenger or a or a Mustang. But it isn't. It's a Flying Dutchman. It's a brilliantly eccentric car. It's such a shame that they're not really in existence. I totally forgot that Spiker bought Saab in 2010. I'm so glad that it's not actually a very big car because these lanes are narrow. That gear shift is quite tight, it's lovely. It's got that crazy suspension that's uh, inboard, that's adjustable, all rose jointed. It's a hell of a thing, you know, proper, proper piece of work. But of course it was also built as a bit of a, it's a supercar, but it's very comfortable. Richard said the suspension's pretty firm. It's firm, but I don't find it to be crashy. And we've been driv driving on some quite horrible roads, actually. Spiker C8 La Violette. I mean, cool name, right? Spiker La Violette. And I think I'm with Richard. I, I think I prefer the hard top, the La Violette to the Spider, because you get this amazing glass ceiling punctuated by that huge nostril and that and the nostrils on either side that I can see in the side mirrors are forcing cold air into the mouth of this Audi V8. Pedal box is pretty nice actually. I just wish I was wearing slightly smaller shoes. It's a proper responsive motor actually. It just feels like I'm driving something out of the Thunderbirds. I don't know, there's this weird mix of retro and future about it. Because that's a very smooth V8. No, don't get me wrong, it's roaring, but it's not like a dirty V8. And all of this just feels retrospective, but beautifully executed retro. And this wheel, steering wheel. It's like something out of Harry Potter or Pirates of the Caribbean. Like, I kind of dig it. I kind of dig it. All that's left to say is, as you'll see in the future with car caves, I'm gonna always try and get a drive of one of the cars in the collection in the cave. Car caves is not about people that just collect cars and have them as ornaments. They're always driven. They're always cars that people have bought and they're actually interested in them not just investment ornaments. I want to say thank you to Richard Gill who's let me come and look at his, his car cave and drive his beautiful spiker. I've got to say thank you to Adrian Flux Insurance who have covered me on this car to drive for the shoe. Car Caves is proudly sponsored by EBC Brakes and there is a discount code in the description and below where you can get 15% off all their products. Thank you for watching. And if you haven't already subscribed, 
Go on. Subscribe. Who are you?